Everyone knows what a subwoofer is for, right? A subwoofer is for filling in at the very bottom of the frequency range so that in your home cinema system, the big explosions have all of the wallop that they need. And when you're listening to music, all of those enormous dance floor bangers have the proper sort of punch and attack. Equally, everyone knows that a subwoofer is a big box with a great big driver in. Now, supposedly, there's a subwoofer inside this box. But frankly, this box doesn't really seem big enough to fit that subwoofer stereotype template. So I think we should open it up and find out how Q Acoustics has fitted a whole load of bass response into a box that's even smaller than this box. Let's have a look. So, ah, small box. Always good to get a small box inside the large box. Some instructions, maybe we'll refer to those. Some mains power, definitely useful. Some floor spikes with rubber boots, equally good news. Now this is gonna have to go on its side. Well, we kind of tease this out of the box. Oh, there we go. Packaging, Let's retain that for later. People move house and everything. So, it's a lot smaller than most people are expecting when they hear the word subwoofer, me included. Uh, it has this lovely curvy cabinet, just like the rest of the Q Acoustics 3000 range. Uh, this is the back end, I think, with uh, level control and crossover, and some nice cable management there behind a magnetic uh, cover. Round at the front, there's nothing but a nice shiny Q Acoustics logo, which is even shinier when you take the sticker off. And then, at the side is the business area. There's a 20 centimeter driver under here and it's powered by 150 watts of internal amplification. At the bottom, four little feet, which all accept a floor spike. Nothing is worse than a subwoofer that sits straight on the floor because those bass frequencies just wanna move downwards. And the more you decouple it from the floor, the more encouraged they are to come forwards or sideways, or backwards, anything but down. So I will attach the floor spikes, and then I will put their little rubber feet on. And there we go, standing on its feet, ready to go. All it needs is plugging into the mains and wiring to an amplifier, and we're in business. Beautiful thing about low frequencies is that they're much less directional than the rest of the information in the frequency range, which means although this is a nice decorative item and it wouldn't look out of place in anyone's house, you can put it anywhere in the room that it needs to go, wherever it's most convenient for you, and it will still contribute all of the low frequency stuff that it's meant to, to your home cinema or to your stereo system. So getting up and running with a 3060S couldn't be any easier. Around the back here is the control panel. You wire to the mains in here and you take a single phono cable from the subwoofer pre-out of your amplifier to the input here. Level control and a crossover control here. Obviously you'll need to identify the crossover point that's required here. Your loudspeakers will reach down to a certain level and the subwoofer is designed to fill in below there. What you don't want is the subwoofer sort of overlapping your speakers so you get a big bloom of frequency information that distracts from all the stuff that's happening above and below it. But you make your two connections, you set your volume level, you set your crossover point, you put your little magnetic flat back in place and you're in business. And that, in a nutshell, is the Q Acoustics 3060S. This is how you can bring big presence to your home cinema without bringing a big presence to your home cinema room. For more details about the way this is configured, about phase shift and all magic subwoofer things like that, you can visit the Q Acoustics website where you can also learn all about how to build a home cinema system and everything else that you could possibly need to know about the Q Acoustics 3000 range.